Hey Trenton Thunder fans, it's radio broadcaster Greg Caserta. Like you, I am so excited for the 2023 season. And to get you ready for it, I got a chance to sit down with our manager back for a third season in the Futures League, the most recent inductee into the Trenton Baseball Hall of Fame. Here's my chat with Jeff Manto. So, Jeff Manto, you are entering your third season as manager of the Trenton Thunder. And I guess now you could say you're living proof that time flies when you're having fun. I'll tell you what, this is a great opportunity. I mean, from the first year here to now, it's, uh, it's been more than what I expected. I really have. I, I knew the front office was great. I knew the fans were great. But uh, inside and seeing these great players come through here, and although that, yeah, they're not double-A players and, and maybe not what the fans are used to, it's still an exciting place to watch a game and even manage a game. It really is. What are you most excited about going from year two to year three, seeing the developments and the progress that was made going from year one to year two? Well, I'm anticipating and, and, and uh, a better uh, quality, and everything's going to be tighter now because there's a few mistakes that were made on my end from uh, the league standpoint, and, but I think they're all getting tightened up. And I only see this, this league getting better. I mean, it's, it, the players are getting better, they're getting bigger, they're getting stronger, even in a three-year period. And it's becoming more exciting because the players are more exciting. When do you start to get that itch again? I know that as we go through the grind of a long season, we get through those dog days of August, and we're kind of counting down to the end. But at what point in the early stages of the offseason do you go, okay, it's time to get back out there? and don that Thunder uniform again. I tell you what, I'm no different than anybody else, man. Uh, the, the lifer of me says, you know, as soon as spring training starts, you know, you start feeling, you start getting the buzz again, you start, uh, you start getting that emotion again, you, uh, you start getting that little, that little adrenaline, if you will, uh, although it's different from when you're playing, but yet when you start seeing everything, talking about the Phillies, talking about the Thunder, talking about Major League Baseball, talking about the Yankees and uh, everybody local here in the high schools and the colleges, um, you start getting the bug early, but you know, getting when you see the College World Series, starting to talk about the College World Series, then it starts to you, know, you start getting okay. This is this is really going to be fun. For you, as somebody that has done everything in this game from the early stages as a player to now as a manager, do you grade yourself or evaluate yourself? Let's say after year one with the Thunder, and then do you do it again last year? And is it different? Like, are are you still? evaluating yourself and coaching yourself through these things. I really am. I mean, the, 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 co the, the players tell you how to coach. Uh, they teach you more than you think. You know, when the different players come in, uh, you to, there's, they're from all different parts of the world, different parts of the country. They've been treated differently. They've, some have been treated great. Some haven't been treated so great. So I'm continuing to learn the psychology of just being a person. And I think after last year's season, you know, I really wasn't patient as, as much as I should have. Uh, I expected something different, and I didn't get what I expected. My tolerance was way too low. And going into year three, I'm going to have to get back to, to where um, I have to appreciate that these kids just don't know, and I have to teach more. Do you think that that's part of the fun of the job where you're still evolving and evaluating because you get to a point where you're like, all right, what else do I need to learn? But then you realize as somebody that's been doing this for a long time, there's still ways to improve and get better. It's not just for the players, but for you as well. And that cliche has been like that for a long time. And, and you don't realize it until you're sitting, you know, 35 years later thinking, you know what, I, I might have missed something here because I never knew that. And, and it, so it is true. You, you do learn something every year. And, you know, and to think that uh, you have it all figured out in anything is definitely not the, wrong, the, the right way to go about it. And I certainly uh, almost fell trapped to that. So I'm a little bit more alert now. Are there points where it brings you back to when you were a player and not even as a minor league player with a major league organization, going back to those really amateur days when you were going from high school to college and then beyond college to becoming a pro? Yeah, you know, I, I keep on forgetting that I had no idea what a hit and run was. I had no idea how to steal base. I had no idea how to set pitchers up. I had no idea how to hit a curveball. I had no idea how to dress or how to do my cage work or how to take batting practice. And sometimes you take it for granted. So I think uh, watching that evolution of a player, I do go back. And, and that's what makes me um, humble about what I do and how I did it, uh, how I've done it. It's just, it keeps me in place, keeps me in check to realize these kids just don't know. And it's not their fault because I didn't know either. Do you think that college programs are doing enough to help these guys get ready? Like, do you see it where, all right, this guy from a Division One program, he knows what to expect in certain areas, but 
other guys from different parts of the country maybe don't know the different nuances of being a pro? I do think that there's, it depends what college you come from. They're yeah. all different. Now, some guys will come back, and uh, some schools are noted for their pitching, and you get one of their pitchers and go, okay, they know what they're doing over there. And then you get a kid from another you know, a Power 5 school, a hitter, and going, what, what are you doing? You know, we don't do that here. But you get away with it in college, and what we talk about here when it comes to the hitting and the playing is the sustainability of, hey, if you want to play longer, you're going to have to have a swing path that's going to be sustainable. And I understand what the college coaches are going through because they have a four-year window, and most of them have to win. There's a lot of colleges in, in the country where they don't have to win. They just have to make sure it's a, it's a pleasant environment and a safe place for kids to play. But the people who want to play and want to win, you know, they know that they, they know what they're doing. You know, they need to have good players right away. How coachable? are these guys? Because I think about your career as an instructor, as somebody that's coached at the minor league level, somebody that's coached at the major league level, and now you're doing this, and then you factor in your new high school job, which you're undertaking. How coachable are these young college players that you've dealt with the last two years in the Futures League? Well, I think one of the things to be a, uh, a successful player is you have to be coachable. And these kids that we've had the last two years have been extremely coachable. Uh, I don't know what they're being told before they get here, uh, who's coaching them, who's managing them, or, or what. But they come in here, they're wide-eyed, uh, they want to learn. Because I think if you get to this level, if you're playing for the draft league, you want to further your career. And you're going you're gonna to leave all your stuff outside the clubhouse. Everything you've learned, we tell the players when they come in. Everything you've learned, forget it. It's way different here. This is how we're going to steal bases. This is how we hit and run. This is how we bunt. This is how we hit. This is how we dress. And they want to, they want to know They want to know because they want to get better. And all good players want to know. As the most recent inductee into the Trenton Baseball Hall of Fame, and for me that was such a great night to be a part of, what has this ballpark, what has this organization meant to you and your family? It's meant a ton. It really has. And I remember being a, a, a player in the minor leagues when this, this affiliated, the affiliation came about. I mean, and one day I hope to play for these guys. I mean, to play in your, your area, to play in your hometown, so to speak. And to come back here, it's just been everything I thought it would be. Uh, the front office treats you great. The ownership treats you great. The fans treat you great. It's easy in, easy out. The food's good. The clubhouse is nice. And I, I just... Now, sometimes you want to like just be miserable and try to pick at something. You can't find anything wrong here. For you last season, and we saw it really shift from the first half to the second half, the rosters are completely remade. You have guys in the first half, many of whom get drafted. Then you've got guys in the second half who are basically on their last legs. They are now professional ball players. They are trying to get that lifeline from a major league team or even a, an independent team. Did it shift your responsibilities drastically in terms of what you had to convey to the players? Well, what I found, it, 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 it did, but what I found is that I, I wanted to teach more. I wanted to teach more, but I didn't want to get in their way either. There was a lot of okay. flaws that these players had, but knowing player development and how long it truly takes to develop a player, uh, I didn't want to go in too heavy, too hard, because I didn't want to... Um, you know, change them in the middle of them trying to make a living. You know, if I knew there was there was a guaranteed three four year contract where there was a time to there was time to develop, it would have been a lot different. But now when the, these kids come in, you, know, you want to give them quick messages and you hope that they retain it. Are you able to identify who is cut out for this? And what I mean is not necessarily the physical attributes, the skill sets, things like that. But who's got the mental wherewithal to survive a long season? what it takes, like you said before, to be a professional day in and day out. You, you could tell right away. You could tell right away. You could tell the kids. Um, uh, that, that being a coach, is, you're a psychologist, and you're always observing and things through the years. What I think I've become really good at is reading people's body language. And when you walk in a clubhouse, you see a kid on the phone all the time. You watch a player. He's always by himself. Uh, you watch a player, and they're just not having fun. They're not smiling. They're sitting by themselves on a bus, uh, on the road. They're not really happy. You know they're not cut out for it because they know you, they're homesick. Uh, it, it's a lot of stress, and, and you'll see kids act in different ways, and, and that's when we watch out for it. But the, when you find a kid that really wants it, you know it because they don't care about anything except the next pitch. I want to go back to that first homestand last year, which was drastically different than year one of the Trenton Thunder in the Futures League when there were still COVID limitations mm -hmm. and the ballpark was not open to full capacity. Now you go back to last year, and there's three crowds over that first homestand between six and 7,000. They're loving it. The players are loving it, where mm -hmm. they're even having back and forth and interactions with the crowd. 
What was that first homestand like seeing? I'll I tell you what, these kids were fired up. I was excited. I'm thinking this is uh, this is great for me as well. The coaching staff enjoyed it. Uh, the players were just out of their minds. It, it was a buzz. The people were bouncing. They were dressed like five o'clock. Hey guys, we got there, we got two hours yet. No, no, we're ready. We're ready to go. I'm like now you got to wait. The excitement was unbelievable. And, and I, again, that's one of those things. You go back. I'm not surprised. Mm -hmm. I, I want to. Uh, you you want to go back and compliment everybody in Trenton, but. I'm not surprised because you, you expect that because they, everybody does such a good job and they didn't disappoint at all. What do you foresee being the biggest change or changes to the league going from last year to this year in year three? Well, I think it's going to be a lot of urgency. Uh, I think these players recognize, I think now the players are starting to talk and to realize that hey, this, these people are legitimate that we're playing for, the information that we're getting is legitimate. Because uh, I hear back, I still have colleagues in the game that call and go, what do you have on this particular player? And what do you have on this particular player? And scouts are calling because, believe it or not, the older scouts and the younger scouts, they still trust us in our evaluation. So I think the players know that too. We could help them uh, even an old school observation uh, can help put them over the top. Have you kept in touch with players from last year? Has, has there been a connection? And especially with guys from the first half, you had a handful of guys that got drafted. Uh, were you able to keep tabs on them? We, I, I watch them from afar. I watch some box scores. Uh, I'm not one of those overly lovingly managers to where they keep my number, call me when you're, I'm not one of those guys. But if you need something, call me. Uh, I'm one of these, just like, let these guys go. Let them be themselves. I had an impact on them and just go. Uh, keep in touch. A couple guys call me now and then. And, I, and one of the messages that we do give these players is if you need anything, if I can make a phone call for you, I will. And certainly I've made plenty of phone calls, plenty of text messages for these guys, but we're not exchanging Christmas cards. Now, I think about a second half guy like Troy Banks, who was a favorite of mine, mm -hmm. and Dave Schofield, my broadcast partner, mm -hmm. and a guy that was undersized, probably overlooked uh, mm -hmm. given his physical stature. But then you see he recently signed a professional contract to play independent baseball. When you see something like that, is there maybe more of a reward for a guy like that that had to overcome a little bit more than some of the other guys? I think you're always uh, happy for those types of players, and he, he's no, no exception. Uh, I think he's, he's definitely a valuable player. He, he definitely is a valuable player to any team. And uh, when you see these players continue to play, you just hope that they, uh, they learn from the mistakes that they made here and somehow or other at what, some point during the game they're thinking, okay, what would Mick do right here? So that's, the only, that's my only wish. And I guess one final question, now that you're preparing for your first season as the head coach at Conwell League in high school, how has that process been going? I know that you're counting down to opening day. You've had workouts and uh, the team's starting to come together for you. I tell you, it's been a lot of fun. I tell you, you talk about you know, being at every level uh, and what they do and don't know is this one's fun. This is really fun because these kids think I'm absolutely crazy. Uh, some of the things I'm saying and some of the things I'm saying, what we're going to do offensively and defensively, and I'm trying to compare them to big leaguers, and, and they, they light up. They really do light up. They're easy to light up. Uh, talk about coachable. These kids are just extremely coachable. They don't understand it all the time, which is, I mean, think about it. You know, I'm telling these guys stuff they've never heard before, and the good part about it, their parents never heard it before either. So it's, it's new to everybody, and which is exciting for them and certainly exciting for myself. What a responsibility you have as somebody that gets to draw on a lot of blank slides. <laughs> and, uh, and like you said, we're uh, getting ready for year three of you with the Thunder. And uh, it's always great to have you back. Always nice to be here.